So except for the very end of this, it's going to be all done sitting in a chair and we're just going to work from head downward. So starting with movements of your head and neck, you're just going to tilt your head over to one side and back to the other. So you're just moving in this plane. And then adding a turn, so you're going to turn, trying to keep your jaw level as you turn. So now just moving in this plane. And then nodding down and lifting up. So now moving in this plane. So you can combine those movements together. So let's start with a tilt, add a turn, and then add the lowering. And you should feel a little bit of a stretch as you do that. And then drop your head down in the middle. Only go to a stretch you're comfortable with. So tilt to the side, add the twist, a turn, and then down. And drop down in the middle. Tilt to the side. Turn, and this time lift up. But still come down in the middle to finish. One more tilt to the side. Turn and look up. And come down in the middle. Okay, so let's move into the shoulders. Thinking about the shoulder blades. Slide them up and bring it down. And if you feel behind you, you can feel the shoulder blade move on your back. Right, how it glides up and down. You can also move them backwards and forwards. So when you do this movement, you wanna be careful that you're not involving the whole spine, right? That you're just letting the shoulders move around the ribs. And then you can combine any of those movements. So forward and up and back and down, forward and up and back and down, or the opposite way. and any version of that you like. So because the shoulder blades can move so freely, we get a nice range of motion with our arms. So start with the arms out in front of you, and you're gonna raise them above your head and just feel your armpits are going forward and up, and then bring it down. So put your hand and find the bottom of your shoulder blade there, and move, as you move your arm up, feel how it moves around, right? So when your arms are up, you're much wider because that shoulder blade has swung out. Yeah, they move this way and this way. And then do that on the other side. So up, feel how it swings around to the side and then goes back. Yeah. Good, and that allows us to move our arm without everything getting tense in the neck. Okay, so now start with both arms, palms down. You're gonna press out with the palms down, then turn, bring it back in. Down to push out, up to come in. Down and up, down and up. One more. And you could do these with weights too. I found these tiny little bottles of Prosecco, which are very cute. Um, so this time let's go the opposite, up to go out, down to come in. And you only want to use a light weight, like two pounds is fine, because you're keeping the arm long. Down to come in, up to go out, down to come in, and then bring the arms to your sides. So as you open your arms out, keep the palms down. When you get to midway, turn them up and reach over. Feel how your shoulder blades moved out. And then open with the palms up, turn down, and lower. And you wanna make sure that your hands are in your periphery, that you aren't taking your arms behind you. So out and over. Sitting bones on the chair, and imagine they grow roots that go all the way down to the floor. 
and you're gonna lift away from them and just go over to the side and come back. And that hand can slide with you on the chair if it wants to. And back. Making sure you're lengthening and not collapsing here. Do that on the other one. So lengthen and lift away from that sitting bone. And up. And again. Lift, lead with the head. And up. One more. Over. And up. Now, adding uh, the other hand to behind your head, and you're going to twist now. Lift as you twist. And come center. And really think of lifting from way down, just above your bum. Right, so the whole spine gets something to do. Trying to really root those sit bones down and move away from them. So let me just turn to the side so you can see for this next one. So you're going to have your hands on your knees and you're going to push the hands down the legs as you curve your spine. I'm a little tight here so it's not the best example but you're trying to make a curve from your head to your tail. And then as you pull your hands back, you're gonna arch the opposite direction. And push and curl. And pull and arch. And push and curl. And pull and arch, okay? So let's do some combinations of those movements now. So hand behind the head. Start with your pure side bend. Add the twist, and then add the curve, and then drop down to lift other side. So up and over sideways, add your twist, and then add that curve, pulling back here, drop down. Once more each side of that, up and over, add your twist, and add the curl under, and come down, up and over, add the twist, and curl, and back. So let's add the arch this time. So up and over, add the twist, and then lift the arch. But we'll still come down to end it. Up and over, add the twist, and up. twist and the arch and come down the last time over twist and arch and come down okay so now have your hands just at the tops of your knees sort of where your kneecap meets all those muscles in your thigh and just straighten one leg out and down and feel those muscles engage around the top of your knee if you want you can lift the leg you can also keep it low if you feel tight there. Right, feel those muscles working all the way to the kneecap. Now this time, let your knee go to the side as you lift your foot as though you're trying to look at the sole of your foot. And look. So you get a little hip and ankle action in there with the knee. And now the ankle, so reach the leg out and just circle round and up. Two, one more. And other way. And bring that down. And circle. And round. And foot down. So now lifting up the toes and then the heel. Toes, heels, toes, heels, toes, heels. Now lift up the little toe side of your foot and then the big toe side. Little toes, big toes. So you're really rocking through the foot. Okay, and then I'm just going to sit to the side for the last one here. So you're going to have your feet firmly on the floor. Moving from your hip joints, you're going to hinge forward, have your hands on your thighs actually, and then stand all the way up, and then hinge 
hinge back. So the lower your seat is, the more challenging this will be. Hinge all the way up, stacking everything. Hinge and back. Hinge and up. Now let's just do a few more and you can add challenges. So if you don't hold your legs, it becomes a little more challenging. So you're really moving at the hips. And if you want to, you could also add a leg lift as you stand to test your balance. And then just come up one last time and turn around to your chair. So you can have your hands on the seat of the chair or on the back of the chair. Start with bent knees and a flat back. And then you're going to move from your tailbone, tuck your hips under, and just curl your spine. And then lengthen out and long. So tailbone moves under. And if you want to get a little more stretch, you can straighten the knees as you round your back. See how that feels. One more. And then bring your hands to your legs. 